see. I should say, please welcome the youngest Best Actor Oscar nominee in almost 80 years. Yeah! I'm shocked by that. I'm shocked too. <laughs> but I say congratulations to you. Thank you. Have you ever had a lead role in anything before? Call me by your name? Well, exactly. I mean, that's why I didn't feel like too much of a risk because I thought if, you know, if this doesn't work, worst thing that'll happen is six years from now, someone will stop me in the street and say, hey, didn't you have sex with a peach in that movie? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, for, yeah. But I watched an interview that you did with my buddy Josh Horowitz from MTV, because I guess you and Ansel Elgort went to high school together. This is also true. And you said that like Ansel was getting all the big parts, and you weren't able to get parts in high school. What, yeah, he did. What's, okay, yeah. What's so up he, with that? Yeah. He did Hairspray and uh, Guys and Dolls, which I auditioned for. But I looked very young in high school. So for the musicals, they always try to get like the older looking kids. Oh, right. And I was like, you know, I like candy. I just like looked very young or something. So. Uh, I wouldn't get those roles, but then, you know, there was a talent show uh, that you could like audition for and make your own acts, and that's why I have all these embarrassing rap videos online the best now. Ever. Is because of this talent show. So, <laughs> nice contingent over here. <laughs> I'm so glad those are available for public consumption because they're just so much fun. So, what what led you to not be frustrated about it or not give up if you saw everyone else getting all the big parts? Oh, no, well, uh, the high school this was at, it's called the uh, LaGuardia High School for Performing Arts in New York, and, um, and it, I mean, there was no sense of, uh, of giving up or something. I mean, I had a, the great fortune of a lot of encouragement, whether from faculty or the other students or family, mom, if she's watching this somewhere. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I was lucky in that sense. And for anyone who has seen Call Me By Your Name, it's just such a joy to watch you in this role for many reasons, not the least of which is to watch you go in and out from English and French and Italian and playing the guitar and playing the piano, all of which were new to you except for English and French because you knew those two languages. Are you, do you think about everything that you were able to accomplish in learning all of these things and be like, damn, I can't believe I did that? Or did it make sense to you that you were able to pick up all those skills? I don't know, it just, it seemed, you know, with Call Me By Your Name, it's based on a book, and there were already a lot of fans of that book, so the idea of, you know, acting in it was just to be as faithful to the adaptation as possible. Uh, Elio in the book is a masterful piano player. He weaves in and out of languages, so as an actor, that becomes your chief responsibility, staying as faithful to that, and, um, and, and just being true to Andre Osman's words. Since you brought it up, what was your reaction when you read the script and saw the peach scene? Well... Yeah, I was like, this is what I've been waiting for, you know? Uh, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> were you like, how am I going to do this? Or were you thinking, I got it? Yeah, I, I've been waiting for, waiting for this moment my whole life. Uh, no, I mean, again... Like it's it's in the book, so it just felt like it it had to be done, and um, one of the other many unforgettable moments is the last shot of of the film, right? For those of you who have seen it. It's unforgettable, and I feel bad for everybody who worked on Call Me By Your Name because no one's watching the credits, which are playing next to your face. We're only Never watching that, your face, right? Yeah. So it's kind of your fault that no one's ever going to get the, the due that they deserve. How many times did you have, how many takes were you allowed to get that right? We did three takes, and uh, I really got lucky. The director of the film, Luca Guadagnino, is a real master, and yeah, and has incredible... Uh, and his direction and editing and all the things that I'm naive to. His communication with us as actors was crystal clear and made us feel very comfortable. And for that last uh, scene in the movie, similar to a lot of scenes, we did three different versions. And one, he said, you know, stay very guarded as a character. Don't let anybody into your thoughts. Keep it private. And the second take, he said, let them in a little bit more. And the third take, he said, really let it go. And that, that third one is not in the movie because it was like, <laughs> you know, like... 
It would have been gross to look at for four minutes. Did you know in the moment that there was a fly on you? Have you guys noticed this fly buzzing around? Did you know? That was all, I, yeah, I, I uh, you know, talking to the fly before the take, and it was like, you know, land, no. I mean, uh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Kumail's gonna get up here and he's gonna kill it. He's <laughs> so good at this. <laughs> I'm saying it now, because I feel like I'm leaving myself open for some pot shots from Kumail. So. You're, you're not doing so bad. Okay, all right. So I love the fact that, as I understand it, like a week ago, you and Army Hammer and Luca Guadagnino were back in Crema, the town where you filmed this. Yeah, yeah. What happened when you were there? It was great. We threw a dance party in the uh, Duomo. And for people that have seen the film, it's where the scene with Oliver and Elio happens, where they're reading books at the beginning. And it was great. It was everybody in the area that had been generous with their time or their space or their food and uh, you know, dancing in the center of the town in addition to all the you know, biggest fans that, that had come in to Kramer for the screening. So that was like a real dream come true moment, really. That's like... And then I was talking to Luca at the Golden Globes and he brought up a sequel. And I'm liking this idea. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing Dakota Johnson. Maybe she could play Army's wife. Are you on board? Are, are you into the idea? Absolutely. I mean, what, I mean, yeah, that'd be a dream come true. So. Um, we'll see, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, that'd be employment, so. <laughs> I'm not like, you know, I don't have like a total career like everybody else up here yet. I mean, like half the people here probably have no idea who I am, so. That's quickly changing. I congratulate you on this movie and Lady Bird and Hostiles and what an amazing you. year you've had. Timothy Chalamet, everybody.